Hi everybody. Um, this is now, I think, take three, four, maybe even five of this video. Um, maybe I've become more nitpicky uh, as we've gone along. I believe the first two that I did were one takes. Um, actually, that's not true because the very first one I did was the one that we showed during our live stream, Weekend Services live stream. And I think that uh, uh, Felipe, our uh, intern Felipe, was very patient with me. And I think we probably did about five takes on that one as well because we were trying to keep it to a certain length of time. But I wanted to at least tell you that the reason why I did not stick with the first video take of this particular installment of our personal um, devotions, uh, these selfie videos that I've been doing um, on Psalm uh, chapter 9, first couple of verses of Psalm chapter 9, uh, the reason why I didn't keep the, the first take was I was I was here on campus. I was walking down the um, driveway to the towards the bottom end of the campus. It was a typical uh, July, late July morning in Aptos, i.e., cold and foggy, almost to the point of raining. Uh, and uh, I was I was noticing that my eyes kept watering um, as I was getting ready to to do this video, and uh, I kept blotting them, drying them, and then I finally did the did the video, and everything seemed fine until I rewatched it. And when I rewatched it, I noticed about halfway through a little tear forming just below my eye and just slowly making its way down my cheek. And I just could not get, uh, could not get past that. Um, if I was uh, maybe a little bit more techy, I would have perhaps kept the video and uh, maybe circled it and written something funny across the screen, but um, not prepared to do that or I wasn't prepared to do that. So alas, um, here we are uh, many takes later. Uh, without, with all of that uh, uh, preliminary stuff aside, um, I do want to um, let you know that today what we're going to be looking at is the second part of the first verse of Psalm chapter 9. Uh, we looked last week at the part, uh, the very first part of uh, verse 1, which says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. The second part continues where um, it says, and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. It reminds me of another psalm. I believe it is Psalm 77. Don't quote me on that. I don't have notes in front of me right now, but I know that I know that this is in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, uh, and it uh, kind of expands or elaborates uh, on this uh, idea of giving, um, uh, excuse me, of, of speaking of what is true of the Lord and what he's done. And it says this, um, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all of your works. I will meditate on all your mighty deeds. When we read a psalm like this, or the second part of Psalm 9, verse 1, we can think about what we would call testifying, uh, or, or speaking what is true of the Lord to people who don't know him uh, in particular, to um, perhaps uh, uh, pave the way for the Holy Spirit to come and give them revelation of who God wants to be for them, who he is and wants to be for them in their lives. And by all means, we can read these psalms with that in mind. But... As we're talking about this subject of personal devotions, uh, and I, as I consider some of the other things that are written in the context, the larger context of these psalms, these, uh, these statements of what God has done, telling of his, his wonderful deeds, they really are a way of, uh, uh, of rehearsing what he has done. Uh, and um, and they, they have a, an incredible power really to, to edify us to build, and to build our faith. Over the years at the Coastlands, we've received some really fantastic teaching on the subject of covenant. Covenant is that non-contractual relationship that we enjoy with the Lord and that we can have with each other and that he wants us to have with each other, wherein uh, we are uh, promised things or we give promises and we uh, endeavor to be uh, who God wants us to be for the sake of someone else. Or, or he uh, endeavors, of course, doesn't just have to endeavor. He, he knows how to do this. He does it so well. He's the author of covenant, wherein he um, makes us promises and, and is consistent in who he is to us. All of these things um, are done without any kind of um, requirement of the other person in the covenant. They're not uh, conditional. They are statements, I will be who I am for you regardless, no matter what. And covenant is the very, it's the foundation, really. It's the foundation stone for our relationship in the, in the, with the Lord and all the things that we would experience in that relationship with him. 
And one aspect of covenant is the sharing of history or the rehearsing of history. And one of the ways that that can look or take, take, uh, take shape in our lives is that um, we, uh, with a person that we love, you know, whether it's a, a, a family member, a, a good friend, a, a, a co-worker that we've even, uh, uh, even a co-worker that we've grown close to, a spouse, our kids, um, our, our extended family, um, we, we, we rehearse things that we've experienced together. Talking about that camping trip, um, you know, it could be things that are very deep, that are serious. Oh, I remember that one time when you, you know, you broke your, your leg and I took you to the hospital or it could be things that are just a lot of fun. That trip to, to Disneyland, that time that we were, that we were uh, out on a, uh, on a raft on the river. It could be any number of things. But it's that, that rehearsing, the, the talking about the things that we've experienced together that does so much to increase our fondness for that person uh, and also to, um, to, to deepen our relationship with, him, uh, with them. And it's, it's very similar with the Lord. When we speak what is true of him, when we tell of his wonderful deeds, it does something to increase the intimacy that we have uh, with him. But it has this also, it has this wonderful power, as I mentioned before, of, of really deepening and strengthening our faith. And so, uh, as I mentioned last week, I will oftentimes start my, my prayer time, my quiet time with the Lord, with giving him thanks. Uh, that's one way to do it. You don't have to start out your every prayer time that way. Um, but I move oftentimes from that, that time of prayer, even, if, even in the same kind of sequence that's laid out in Psalm chapter 9, verse 1, um, I move on from thanksgiving to, to speaking out what is true of him, telling uh, the, the, uh, the room around me, nature around me, wherever I happen to be, uh, telling that, speaking out what is true of him, speaking of his wonderful deeds. David would say, uh, will say in the Psalms and, and, and says things like this in many different places, God, you have, you have delivered me. You have uh, pulled me out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock. Similarly, I will say things like, Lord, you have set me free. In spite of my, my sin, in spite of my poor choices, you brought me salvation. You have restored things that were broken. You have redeemed things that were lost, things that I forfeited, things that were stolen from me. Lord, you and you alone have done it. It's by your grace and your grace alone. And there's something very distinct, uh, distinctly different about speaking out that way um, the things that God has done um, than, than, than giving God thanks for those very things. We could give thanks to him for those very same things. Um, and it's not to say that there's, you know, that our, our, our prayer time has to be so strict and formulaic. But again, these are principles and patterns that we're seeing in Scripture of how we can interact with the Lord in such a way as to deepen our relationship with Him. So I encourage you, as you, as you pray to the Lord, uh, put into practice giving Him thanks for very specific things, but also reflect on your life. Rehearse that history with Him, the things that He has done, and speak them out. Lord, you have done this, and I believe your faith will be built up, uh, even as mine is, uh, even now as I'm, I'm filming this video and thinking about the many things that God has done in my life to bring me to where I am uh, right now and that are responsible uh, or that are a part of the story of him making a way for me to experience fullness of life and deepen intimacy with him. So that's it for now, and I look forward to our next installment. I uh, hope this is helpful for you.